When your uh, stick welder is on, the electrode will be live all the time, as you can see this. So you've got to be fairly careful what you're touching and where you're pointing the electrode. Welding machine, fine, it's switched off, electrode, and earth clamp, anything it's touching is not a problem, it's live. But the best thing to do, well, what I do is to have the electrode and get it somewhere where it's not going to come in contact with your workpiece or anything related to it, which in this case at the moment is on the floor. <laughs> Okay, hello and welcome back to another edition of the uh, Land Rover Specific Welding. Now, the welding rods that we're using in this uh, video series is a power weld rod, which is available from Arkwright. Go on the site, look at for welding and cutting, and then click on rods and electrode link, and that will take you through to the E6013s, which is a general purpose uh, mild steel all positions welding rod. And you can see the price is about a tenner for five kilograms, which is good value. We don't have a welding bench for our chassis project. What we have is a different welder positions, and I'm going to show you a couple of them. What we're basically stuck with is a chassis. So welders positions, when you're welding, we're going to be either welding flat and uh, hopefully with the welder switched on. But for safety purposes, I've got it switched off for now. Probably the worst position is welding something called an overhead position, which you're going to have to get yourself down below and underneath so you can weld overhead. I'll explain overhead in following videos, but basically it is going to be uh, something you're going to have to get used to. We're also going to have a look at the horizontal welds here, which you will need to do. There are some standard welding positions as opposed to welder positions. And you have like flats, uh, horizontal and vertical fillet, horizontal, uh, vertical, vertical down and vertical up and overhead. We will cover these because these are the positions you'll need to weld in when you're welding parts on a chassis. Okay, to give an example, we have here, um, this will be a vertical fillet for instance, which is two pieces of metal at an angle are welding vertically. And then, of course, we have a fillet horizontal, which is the same thing. It's a 90 degree angle and we're welding, moving in a horizontal position. OK, now, if this makes it clear enough, we're also going to do a flat welding like so in this position and overhead, which is a pig to do for some people. This is also horizontal position as well. Now, what we have to really start with is a welding position or, or the progression angle of the electrode, which, um, according to some manuals, is about 75 to 80 degrees. Now, I've set this uh, angle gauge up, and thanks to Forby for this one. So we're looking at getting the electrode for positioning will be like this, it will be not like that, it will be like something roughly like this. E6013s are actually quite forgiving and you can drop the angle down a bit more. I uh, tend to have a habit of welding at about 60, 65 degrees of an angle, but you can see it welds just as well. Don't be sloppy, make sure that you get your angles if you're starting off um, welding first, get them right and get a feel for them. Basically, with a welding rod, you are progressively moving, filling weld onto the metal, and you're pushing the rod as it's being consumed. So you're working in this sort of uh, progression. Uh, it's easy to do after a while. You just have to get used to it. You get the feel of it. I've just sped this up so you can see the weld is progressing and the rod is getting shorter, so you have to keep the right arc length all the time. Now, Ralphie here, he's a Polish fitter that I work with. He, uh, he says he can't weld, but he can. I mean, you see the way he's holding his rod straight away and he's put a weld down with no problem. So we get this uh, progression angle 
for the uh, electrode and this is for the uh, flat position of welding and this is what you'd probably first start off with to learn. Now amperage is a big concern, a 3.2 millimeter rod will be 110 to 130 amps However, these SIF rods will tell us that they're uh, from 85 to 130. It's best to get pieces and practice on them first, but you can see this is 85 amps of welding and it hasn't penetrated as good as it should have done. So the amperage would really need to be turned up to maybe 110, 120 to get better penetration on the weld. Okay, so I've got a DC electrode positive and I'm going to turn this up to about 125 amps and I'm going to run a bead of weld on this piece of uh, scrap metal which is about 5 mil. What I need to show you is striking the arc. This is probably where some people actually get unstuck but it's basically a stroking and then you get spark then you want to get your position and get your arc length as close as you can. As they say, you get a tight arc length. If you're uh, stick welding for the first time, you'll probably come across this, which is a strike in the arc and getting the electrode stuck on the workpiece. Don't worry, it happens to everybody. And you'll see here on the uh, weld cam that when you strike an arc, you actually, first of all, get a long arc. So you've got to try and pull it tight as quick as you possibly can. Some electrodes have problems restarting once you've used the uh, electrode, but the E6013 is okay. Now I'm gonna show you this. This is the weld cam where you can actually see the electrode and the deposit of slag and metal onto, the met onto your job, okay? Now this is what you'd call a close arc or a tight arc. I'm, uh, I've got the control of the weld pool and I'm moving the uh, weld along as well as the uh, rod getting shorter at the same time. I did actually run out of weld at that point and there is a crater at the bottom of the weld, you can see that there, but that's a fairly decent weld for the amperage. Okay, so back to the uh, weld cam again, it's just a camcorder with a, a screen in front of it. So what I'm going to explain here is the arc length is the distance between the metal and the tip of your electrode. And this is something you have to maintain while you're welding, you have to have a uh, close arc as it were. Now what I'm going to show you here, what happens when you vary the arc length, okay, it's fairly close here. If you lift it too far away, it actually almost explodes, as you can see like that, too far and it will stop welding completely. Right then, well I actually have a little bit of a problem with this welder, because at 130 amps it actually blows a 13 amp fuse. So you can see it just stopped dead. However, the penetration is excellent on this 5mm bar. Um, compared to the other welds, which are a little bit uh, more raised, you can see the weld's quite flat, but it's a decent weld, and this is what we're trying to achieve. Now, I'd recommend that you practice, first of all, on flat to get your welds right. Now the whole thing with beginning out is you're going to need a lot of practice and uh, don't be scared to just waste metal and rods. Get yourself some scrap from, a, uh, uh, from an engineer's skip for instance. Now the other thing to consider is the speed that you're laying down the weld onto the metal and this very much depends on the rod and the amperage plus the metal. Uh, don't be afraid to experiment of course because um, some welders will say one thing, some welders will say another, so you have to do what you feel is right. Okay, here's some deliberate common mistakes. The first one on the left here is the uh, travel of the weld is far too quick and it hasn't laid it down. The next one here, the arc length was too long and it blew itself out. This next one here is standing in a very uncomfortable position and wobbling about, so it didn't actually, you couldn't get anything consistent on it and the rod length kept changing. And this is something really important to uh, remember. This one here, the uh, travel speed was far too slow. And then the next one here is, well, this is an utter pig's ear because basically I just messed about and then I tried to push the rod in so I was making contact with the metal and it started to gouge it out. And you can all see the heat generated here as well, which is not good. But the whole key is to eventually get a very consistent weld rather than a beautiful weld. You want penetration and consistency. This sort of thing here, if you look at um, machinery, 
and items you can see they've been hand welding because there's not perfect consistency and you could possibly see the odd disaster here because this one has been undercut rather badly so that was a bad welder's day.